I'm remaking this video so it has better voiceover audio quality. UCCNC has inputs and outputs, and active high or active low for each. It can be a little confusing what the function of each is. First, an input is when something happens. Then the EXBB or UCCNC sees that something happened, and then it responds. An example of an input is limit switches, probes, e-stops, or something of that nature. An output is when we send a command to UCCNC via code or an user interface button, and UCCNC responds by applying something to the pin. An example of an output is a relay or the step and direction pulses. UCCNC has an active low and an active high for each input and output setting, and that means slightly different things for each. In regards to an input, the AXBB has a plus and minus for each input. So active low means, while there is current flowing through the plus and minus input, the input is in an off condition. When no current is flowing through the plus and minus, the input shows an on condition. An active high would mean the opposite. So when there is current flowing through the input, the UCCNC displays an on condition. And vice versa, when there is no current flowing through the input, it is an off condition. I believe it is easier to simplify it as while well current is flowing through the input, active high means normally on, while active low means normally off. For an output, it is much simpler. Active low condition means it applies the 24 volt negative or ground. Active high means it applies the plus 24 volt positive. An output would be used for relays. When I try to hook my relay up for the trigger, I don't know why, but the active high did not work. I made sure when the relay was set to high input, so I had to use an active low condition. The AXBB has three ports. Port 1 would be outputs. Port 2 would be inputs. Port 3 would be an extension that starts off as non-isolated. However, the UCSB board will convert the port to an isolated port. However, those isolated port pins from port 3 can still be used for the step and direction pulses. The difference of non-isolated and isolated ports is as it sounds. An isolated port should have an extra security system per se, so no interference is transmitted to other pins. Also, the non-isolated ports should use the 5-volt power supply rather than the 24-volt. These ports are more suited for the pulses needed for step and direction. Since the UCSB board is optically isolated outputs, it will use the 24 volt as the output, but should still be well suited for step and direction pulses. However, I believe if you use just the pins, it will still use the 5 volts. As of right now, I am only using one output, and it is the output 8 for the trigger relay to turn the torch on and off. I said I used the active low condition for this, which means it should apply the 24 volt ground or negative. For port one non-isolated outputs, we are using the pins for the step and direction pulses for the stepper drivers. I used output 17 as the enable, which is jumped to every driver. What the enable pin does is while in UCCNC and the reset condition is flashing, the steppers will be turned on, but disengage so we can spin the motors by hand. I like being able to disengage the motors, most importantly, the Y-axis, because with the newer UCCNC version, I found a bug where the slave access does not work, so I could not perform a gantry squaring. So in order to square the gantry, I can disengage the Y-axis and manually pull the gantry to the hard stops of my machine. I will use an active high condition for all step and direction pulses. So the output should be connected to the correct plus pins of the stepper drivers. It is important to note that since the slave axis did not work, I had to jump the step and direction of YA to YB. In order for YB to spin the opposite direction, I simply wired the pairs backwards in the stepper driver. There is a little debate on how the steps per unit should be calculated. The first way to calculate the steps per unit is by telling the machine to move a certain distance. Then record the distance it actually moved. So let's say you told it to move 25 inches or millimeters and it only moved 20. So you would calculate 20 divided by 25, which is 0 
Then you would multiply the steps per unit you had by that ratio, or 0.8, to find your new steps per unit. I however like to use the unit cancellation method. I like this method more, because in theory the other method includes backlash error and other variances of that nature within the ratio, or steps per unit. With the unit cancellation method, we will find the true number for steps per unit, and any variance we see after the fact will be due to backlash or other variables. Most programs will have a backlash compensation which we can then add later, but that compensation is worthless and untrue for the other method. The way the unit cancellation method works is by picturing in your head a path from computer to a turn per unit has to take. So in my instance, I have a direct drive system, so there's 6,400 steps or pulses per revolution, and that is found with the stepper driver. I have 40 teeth per one revolution. I have two millimeters per tooth because it's a two GT belt. We then place everything in this configuration. So when we multiply across the units will cancel and we're left with steps per millimeter. So 6,400 pulses per one revolution multiplied by one revolutions over 40 teeth would be equal to 160 pulses per teeth. Then 160 pulses per teeth times one teeth per two millimeters is equal to 80 pauses per millimeter. If you have a geared machine, so the stepper motor would have to spin, let's say, three times to get one revolution, you would also multiply that in. In this case, that would be a three times these 80, which would be 240. The velocity and acceleration is determined by listening to the motor to determine if it struggles to move at that speed. The material I mostly use only has a cut speed of a maximum 2,500 millimeters per minute, so I chose a speed that I thought appropriate for jogging. That is 5,000 millimeters per minute, even though the motor seemed to move much faster with ease. For port 2 isolated imports, I'm going to use input 1 for the e-stop, input 2 for the probe, input 3 for the limit switches if I add them. At this moment, I do not have any. But with my machine being belt driven, it's not a detrimental error if I hit the movement limit. Input 4 will be the arc OK. Input 5 will be for torch up. Input 6 will be for the torch down. The analog in and out is more for a mill setup with a variable speed spindle or PWM. This was my error. Input 4, 5, and 6, you can see that the torch height controller unit is hooked up to the input negative side, and the input positive side, it's hooked up to the 24 volt positive. I saw this wiring schematic, and I saw on there on the right hand side where it says DC 24 volt to DC negative. At first, I believe that meant it was applying plus 24 volts, but a closer look at the schematic shows that the 24 volt is just for opening and closing the circuit for the input controller so it applies ground or negative. So the document is correct when it says input of four, five, and six are supposed to be on the negative terminal. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. <music>